Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on machine learning interview questions on IntelliPart. Do you know friends that machine learning is an exciting field that involves developing algorithms and statistical models that enables computers to learn from data and make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning is becoming increasingly popular in wide range of industries including finance, healthcare and e-commerce. According to the pay scale, the average salary of a machine learning engineer in the United States is around $112,742 per year, while going upwards, it's around $160,000 per year. In India, the average salary of a machine learning engineer is around 9 LPA per year. So without further ado, let's dig dive and discuss our interview questions. But before that, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's start with machine learning interview question. Here is your first question. It is a kind of pretty basic question. And the question is explain machine learning, artificial intelligence and deep learning. It is very common to get confused between the three in demand technologies, which are machine learning, artificial intelligence and deep learning. These three technologies through a little different from one another, but are quietly interrelated. While deep learning is a subset of machine learning, Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. Some terms and techniques may overlap in these technologies and it is quite easy to get confused among them. So let's learn about these technologies. If I talk about machine learning, machine learning involves various statistical and deep learning techniques that allows machines to use their past experiences and get better at performing specific tasks without having been to be monitored. If I talk about artificial intelligence, Artificial intelligence uses numerous machine learning and deep learning techniques that enable computer systems to perform tasks using human-like intelligence with logic and rules. If I talk about deep learning, then deep learning comprises of several algorithms that enable softwares to learn from themselves and perform various business tasks including image and speech recognition. Deep learning is a possible when systems expose their multi-layered neural networks to a large volume of data. I hope so guys, you would have got brief idea regarding machine learning, artificial intelligence and deep learning. So our next question is, what is the difference between bias and variance in machine learning? The answer to the same question is that bias is a difference between the average prediction of a model and the correct value of the model. If the bias value is high, the prediction of the model is not accurate. Hence, the bias value should be as low as possible to make the desired predictions. If I talk about the variance, variance is a number that gives a difference of predictions over a training set and an anticipated value of another training sets. High variance may lead to large fluctuations in the output. Therefore, a model's output should have a low variance. If you could see in a diagram, you could see the following trade-off. So here is a bias and variance trade-off. Here is a desired result with the blue circle at the center. If you get off from the blue section, then the prediction goes on wrong. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding the difference between bias and variance in the machine learning. Now let's move on to our next question. Our next question is, what is clustering in machine learning? If I talk about clustering, clustering is a technique which is used in unsupervised learning that involves grouping data points. The clustering algorithms can be used with a set of data points. This technique will allow you to classify all the data points into their particular groups. The data points that are thrown into the same category have similar features and properties, while the data points that belong to a different group have distinct features and properties. Statistical data analysis can be performed by this method. Let us take as some of the examples some of the examples can be k-means clustering. If I talk about the k-means clustering, this algorithm will be commonly used when there is a data with no specific group or category. K-means clustering allows you to find the hidden patterns in the data, which can be used to classify the data into the various groups. The variable k is used to represent the number of groups the data is divided into, and the data points are clustered using the similarity of features. Here, the centroids of the clusters are used for labeling new data. Another clustering algorithm can be mean shift clustering. 
If I talk about the mean shift clustering, the main aim of this algorithm will be to update the center point and the candidates to be mean and find the center points of all the groups. In mean shift clustering, unlike k-means clustering, the possible number of clusters need not to be selected as it can be automatically be discovered by the mean shift. So here are some of the examples of the clustering algorithms. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is clustering in machine learning. Now let's move on and discuss our next question, which is what is linear regression in machine learning? This is the most popular questions which is asked in the machine learning interview. Now let's discuss the answer of the same. Linear regression is a supervised machine learning algorithm which is used to find the linear relationship between the dependent and the independent variables for predictive analysis. Here the equation can be consider y equals to a plus b dot x where x is the input or the independent variable where y is the output or the dependent variable and a is the intercept and b is the coefficient of x. You can see here the diagram with best fit shows that the data of the weight y or the dependent variable and the data of the x of the independent variable. Here the straight line shows that the best linear relationship that would help in predicting the weight of the candidates according to their height. To get this best fit line, the best values of a and b should be found. By adjusting the values of a and b, the errors in the prediction of y can be reduced. This is how the linear regression helps in finding the linear relationship and predicting the output. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is linear regression in machine learning. Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is decision tree in machine learning? If I talk about the decision tree, a decision tree is used to explain a sequence of actions that must be performed to get the desired output. It is a hierarchical diagram that shows the action. This algorithm can be created for a decision tree on the basis of the set of hierarchy of actions. In the above decision tree diagram, a sequence of actions has been made for driving a vehicle with or without license. So you can see how the decision tree algorithm works in the machine learning domain. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is decision tree in machine learning. Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is overfitting in machine learning? Actually, overfitting happens when a machine learning has an inadequate data set and tries to learn from it. So overfitting is inversely proportional to the amount of data. For small databases, overfitting can be bypassed by the cross-validation method. In this approach, a data set is divided into two sections. These two sections will comprise the testing and training data set. To train the model, the training data set is used and for testing of the model, for new inputs, the testing data set is used. This is how we can avoid the overfitting. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is overfitting in machine learning. Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is hypothesis testing? If I talk about the hypothesis testing, machine learning allows the use of available data set to understand a specific function that maps the input to the output in the best possible way. This problem is known as a function approximation. Here, the approximation need to be used for the unknown target function that maps all plausible observations based on a given problem in the best manner. Hypothesis in machine learning is a model that helps in approximating the target function and performing the necessary input to output mappings. The choice and configuration of algorithms allow defining the space of the plausible hypothesis that may be represented by the model. In hypothesis, the lower edge is used for a specific hypothesis where the uppercase edge or the capital H is used for hypothesis space that is being searched. So this is what exactly the hypothesis testing is. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea regarding what exactly is hypothesis testing. Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning? If I talk about the supervised learning, the algorithms of the supervised learnings used the labeled data to get trained. The model takes the direct feedback to confirm whether the output that is being predicted is indeed correct. Moreover, both the input data and the output data are provided to the model and the main aim here is to train the model 
to predict the output upon receiving the new data. Supervised learning offers accurate results and can largely be divided into two parts, which is classification and regression. If I talk about the unsupervised learning, the algorithms of the unsupervised learning use unlabeled data for training purposes. In unsupervised learning, the models identify hidden data trends and do not take any feedback. The unsupervised learning model is only provided with input data. Unsupervised learning's main aim is to identify hidden patterns to extract information from the unknown sets of data. It can also be classified into two parts, which is clustering and association. Unfortunately, unsupervised learnings can offer results that are comparatively less accurate. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is bias theorem? If I talk about the bias theorem, bias theorem offers the probability of any given amount to occur using the prior knowledge. In mathematical terms, it can be defined as a true positive rate of the given sample conditions divided by the sum of the true positive rate of the said conditions and false positive rate of the entire population. Two of the most significant applications of Bayes' theorem in machine learning are and Bayesian belief networks. This theorem is also the foundation behind the machine learning brand that involves NAEP bias classifier. So as you can see the formula here, P of A by B equals to P of B by A dot P A divided by P B, where P of A by B is a probability of occurring B given the evidence B has already occurred, where P of B by A is equals to probability of B occurring given the evidence A has already occurred. Here P A is a probability of A occurring and P B is a probability of B occurring. I hope so guys, you would have got the idea regarding what is bias theorem. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is PCA in machine learning? If I talk about the multidimensional data, it plays an important role in the real world. Data visualization and computations become more challenging with increase in the dimension. In such scenarios, the dimension of data might have to be reduced to analyze and visualize it easily. This is done by removing irrelevant dimensions and keeping only the most relevant dimension. This is where the principal component analysis is used. The goal of the PCA is to find a fresh collection of uncorrelated dimension or orthogonal and rank them on the basis of variance which defines the process of PCA in machine learning. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is PCA in machine learning. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is SVM in machine learning? If I talk about SVM or support vector machines, it is a machine learning algorithm that is majorly used for classification. It is used on the top of the high dimensionality of the characteristic vector which basically defines what SVM is in machine learning. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea what are support vector machines in machine learning. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is cross-validation in machine learning? If I talk about the cross-validation, cross-validation allows a system to increase the performance of a given machine learning algorithm which is fed a number of sample data from the data set. This sampling process is done to break the data set into smaller parts that have the same number of rows out of which a random part is selected as a test set and rest of the parts are kept as a train sets. Cross validation consists of the following techniques which can be holdout method, k-fold cross validation, stratified k-fold cross validation and leave p out cross validation. I hope so guys you would have got a fair idea regarding what is cross validation in machine learning. Our next question is, what is entropy in machine learning? The answer to the same question is, entropy in machine learning measures the randomness in the data that needs to be processed. The more entropy in the given data, the more difficult it becomes to draw any useful conclusion from the data. For example, let us take the flipping of a coin. The result of this act is random and it does not favor heads or tails. Here, the result of any number of tosses cannot be predicted easily as there is no definite relationship between the action of flipping and the possible outcomes. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding entropy in machine learning. 
Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is epoch in machine learning? If I talk about epoch in machine learning, which is basically used to indicate the count of passes in a given training data set where the machine learning algorithm has done its job. Generally, when there is large chunk of data, it is grouped into several batches and all these batches go through the given model and this process is referred to as iteration. Now, if the batch size comprises the complete training data set, the count of iteration is same as that of epochs. In a case, there is more than one batch which is equals to d dot e equals to i star b which is a formula where d is a data set and e is a number of epochs and i is a number of iterations and b is the batch size. So you can remember d dot e equals to i dot b where d is a data set, e is the number of epochs and i is a number of iteration and where b equals to batch size. So this equation generally defines the relationship between epoch, data set, iteration and number of batches. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea regarding what is epoch in machine learning. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. Our next question is, what is the variance inflation factor? The variance inflation factor is the estimate of the volume of multicollinearity in a collection of many regression variables, where VIF equals to variance of the model divided by variance of the model with single independent variable. With that said, for variance inflation factor. I hope so guys, you would have got a brief idea regarding what is variation inflation factor and it is one of the most important questions which can be asked in a machine learning interview. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is a confusion matrix? If I talk about the confusion matrix, it is used to explain model's performance and gives the summary of predictions of classification problems. It assists in identifying the uncertainty between classes. Confusion matrix gives a count of correct and incorrect values and error types according to the model. Where you can see accuracy is defined as TP plus TN divided by TP plus TN plus FP plus FN. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea regarding what is confusion matrix. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, what is the type 1 and type 2 error? Type 1 error is false positive is an error where the outcome of a test shows the non-acceptance of a true condition. For example, suppose a person gets diagnosed with depression even when they are not suffering from the same. It is a case of false positive. If I talk about the type 2 error, type 2 error or false negative is an error where the outcome of a test shows the acceptance of a false condition. For example, the CT scan of a person shows that they do not have a disease, but in fact, they do have a disease. Here, the test accepts the false condition that the person does not have the disease. This is a case of false negative. I hope so guys, you would have got an idea regarding what are type 1 and type 2 error. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our next question is, when should classification be used over regression? Both classification and regression are associated with prediction. Classification involves the identification of values or entities that lie in a specific group. Regression entails predicting a response value from the consecutive set of outcomes. For example, if you want to predict the price of a house, you should use regression since it is a numerical variable. However, if you are trying to predict whether the house situated in a particular area is going to be high medium or low priced, then the classification model should be used. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea that when should you use classification over regression. Now let's move forward and discuss our next question. So our next question is, explain logistic regression. This is also one of the most asked question in a machine learning interview. So logistic regression is a proper regression analysis when the dependent variable is categorical or binary. Like all regression analysis, logistic regression is a technique for predictive analysis. Logistic regression is used to explain data and a relationship between one dependent binary variable or one or more independent variable. Logistic regression is also employed to predict the probability of categorical dependent variables. Logistic regressions can be used in the following scenarios. So here are some of the examples, such as to predict whether the citizen is senior or not. 
or to check whether a person has a disease or not. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea what exactly is logistic regression. Now let's move on and discuss our next question. So our final question is, how do I handle missing values in a data set? So if I correctly answer this question, in Python pandas, there are two possible methods to locate the lost or corrupted data and discard those values. The first function is isNull. It can be used for detecting the missing values. The second one is dropNull, where it can be used for removing a column or row with null values. And there is also another, which is called fillna, which can be used to fill all the word values with the placeholder values. I hope so guys, you would have got a fair idea regarding how to handle the missing values in a data set. Thank you guys for watching this video. That was all for today's session. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video on machine learning interview questions. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPAT has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.